In question 5 of this exercise, we have to find the least number which must be added to each of the following numbers so as to get a perfect square. So each of these 5 numbers that you see here, each of these is not a perfect square and we have to find the smallest number we can add to each number so that we get a perfect square. And then we also have to find the square root of the perfect square so obtained in each case. So here's what we will do in each case. We will find those two consecutive perfect squares between which the given number lies. For example, let's take the number 30. Let's take the number 30. The largest perfect square smaller than 30 is 5 square because 5 square is 25 which is less than 30. And the smallest perfect square larger than 30 is 6 square because 6 square is 36 which is greater than 30. So 30 lies between the consecutive perfect squares 5 square and 6 square. And this helps you easily find the smallest number you can add to 30 to turn it into a perfect square. Just find the difference between 30 and the perfect square that comes right after 30. And this difference between 30 and 6 square is 6 because 6 square is 36. So if you add, if you add to the number 30, if you add 6, you get 36, which is a perfect square. So this is the exact strategy we will apply to each of the given numbers and we will use the division method for this purpose. So follow me carefully as I show you how to solve each part. In part 1, we have the number 525. So let's apply the division method of finding square roots to this number. For that, we put bars over pairs of digits starting from the right. So we put a bar over 25 and then we put a bar over 5. And now we can apply the division method. So in the first step, we have to find the largest possible digit whose square is less than or equal to this uh, uh, number 5 under the first bar. And that largest possible digit is 2 because 2 square is equal to 4 which is less than 5. But the next digit 3 has a square of 9 which is greater than 5. So the first divisor will be 2 and the first digit of the quotient will also be 2 and 2 into 2 is equal to 4. Now if we subtract, we get 5 minus 4 as 1 and if we bring down these two digits, 2 and 5, we get the dividend 125 as the dividend of the next step. For the divisor of the next step, we take this divisor 2 and double it and that gives us 4 and now we have to find the largest possible digit that will go here and also go here as the second digit in the quotient such that the product of this number and this digit here will be less than or equal to 125. And that largest possible digit is 2 because 42 into 2 is 84. And you can check that if you had taken the next larger digit 3, 43 into 3 will become greater than 125. So you have to take the digit 2. Now if you subtract, you get the remainder 41 and now there are no more digits left in the original number so the division process stops at this point. So we have obtained a quotient of 22 and a remainder of 41. So this means that the largest number whose square is less than 525 is this number, this quotient 22. So the largest number whose uh, square is less than 525 is 22 and hence the smallest number whose square is greater than 525 is 23. In other words, the number 525, this number, lies between the square of 22 and the square of 23. So 525 lies between these two consecutive perfect squares and hence the smallest number we can add to 525 to get a perfect square is the difference between 23 square and the number 525. So just calculate the difference between these two numbers. So 23 square is equal to 529. So the difference between 23 square and 525 is equal to 4. Okay. So we can add 4 to the number 525. So the number 525, if we add 4, we get the next immediate perfect square which is 23 square and the square root of that will be 23. So the answer to the first part is that we can add 4, the smallest number we can add is 4 to get a perfect square 
and the square root of that number will be 23. So that completes part 1. Now let's do part 2. The number in part 2 is 1750 and once again we will apply the division method of finding square roots to this number. So we put bars over pairs of digits, we put a bar over 50 and we put a bar over 17 and now we are ready to apply the division method. So in the first step we have to find the largest possible digit whose square is less than or equal to this number under the first bar which is 17 and that largest possible digit is 4 because 4 square is equal to 16 which is less than 17 but if you take the next digit 5 then 5 square is equal to 25 which is greater than 17. So we take the first divisor as 4 and also as the first digit of the quotient and 4 into 4 is equal to 16. Now we subtract 17 minus 16 is 1 and we bring down these two digits 5 0 and that gives us the dividend for the next step as 150. To get the divisor for the next step we take this digit here uh, we take this divisor here 4 and double it so it becomes 8 and now we have to find the largest possible digit that we can put here and that we can put as the second digit in the quotient such that the product of this number here and this digit here is less than or equal to 150 and that digit we can see can only be 1 and 81 into 1 because if you take 2 then 82 into 2 will exceed 150 so we have to take 1 so 81 into 1 is 81 and if we subtract now we get a remainder of uh, 69 and now because the division because there are no more digits left in the original number the division process stops at this point so we have obtained a quotient of 41 and a remainder of 69. So this means that the largest number whose square is less than 1750 the largest such number is 41 okay and this means that the smallest number whose square will be greater than 1750 will be 42. In other words the number 1750 will lie between the consecutive perfect squares 41 square and 42 square and hence to find the smallest number you can add to 1750 to get a perfect square just take the difference of this number and the next immediate perfect square which is 42 square so 42 square is equal to 1764 and this means that 42 square minus the given number 1750 this is equal to 14 so if you add 14 to 1750 you get the next perfect square so let's write this 1750 plus 14 will be equal to 42 square so the answer for part 2 is that the smallest number you can add is 14 so we put 14 here and the square root of the resulting number so obtained will be 42 so 42 is the second part of the answer so this completes part 2 now coming to part 3 the number in part 3 is 252 so once again we will apply the division method to this number for that we put bars over pairs of digits so we put a bar over 52 and then we put a bar over 2 and now we can apply the division method in the first step we have to find the largest possible digit whose square is less than or equal to 2 and that digit is 1 because 1 square is 1 which is less than 2 but if you take the next digit 2 then 2 square is 4 which is greater than 2 so the first divisor will be 1 and the first digit of the quotient will also be 1 and 1 into 1 is equal to 1 now we subtract so 2 minus 1 is 1 and then we bring down these digits 5 2 we bring them down and that gives us 152 as the second uh, dividend se dividend for the second step now to get the divisor for the second step we take this one we double it and that's two and now we have to find the largest digit which will go here and also go here as the second digit in the quotient such that the product of this number here and this digit here is less than or equal to 152 so that digit will be equal to six uh, will be equal to five because 25 into 5 is 125 
but if you had taken the leg next large larger digit 6 then you can see that 26 into 6 will actually exceed 152 so we have to take 5 and 25 into 5 is 125 and now if we subtract 152 minus 125 is 27 okay and now because there are no more digits left in the quotient in the original uh, number the division process stops at this point and we obtain a quotient of 15 and a remainder of 27 this means that the largest number whose square is less than 252 is this number 15 and hence the smallest number whose square will be whose square will exceed 252 will be 16 so the number 252 will lie between the consecutive perfect squares 15 square and 16 square okay and hence to find the smallest number you can add to 252 to get a perfect square just take the difference of 252 and the next immediate perfect square which is 16 square so 16 square is equal to 256 and hence 16 square minus 252 will be equal to 4 so if you add 4 to 252 you get the next perfect square which is 16 square and the square root of that will of course be 16 so the answer for part 3 is that the smallest number you can add is 4 to get a perfect square and the square root will be 16 so that completes part 3 now coming to part 4 the number in part 4 is 1825 and we will once again apply the division method to this number we will put bars over 2 5 and 1 8 like this and now we can apply the division method okay so for the first step we have to find the largest possible digit whose square is less than or equal to this number 18 under the first bar and that digit is 4 because 4 square is equal to 16 which is less than 18 but if you take the next digit 5 then 5 square is equal to 25 which overshoots or exceeds 18 so let's take 4 as the first divisor and also as the first digit in the quotient and 4 into 4 is equal to 16 now 18 minus 16 is 2 and we take now these digits 2 5 and bring them down and that gives us 225 as the dividend for the second step and what about the divisor for the second step for that we take this digit 4 and we double it and that gives us 8 and now we have to find the largest possible digit that we can put here to the right of 8 and here as the second digit in the quotient such that the product of this number and this digit is less than or equal to 225 that digit will be equal to 2 and 82 into 2 you can find this by a little bit of trial and error uh, if, you, if you had taken 3 then 83 into 3 will exceed 225 so you can't take 3 you have to take 2 so 82 into 2 is equal to 164 and now if you subtract you will get a remainder of 61 and at this point because there are no more digits left now in the original number the division process stops at this point so you get a quotient of 42 and a remainder of 61 so clearly the largest possible number whose square is less than 1825 is this number 42 and hence the next number 43 will be the smallest possible number whose square just exceeds 1825 and this means that the number 1825 it lies between the consecutive perfect squares 42 square and 43 square so to find the smallest number you can add to 1825 to get the next to get the perfect to get a perfect square just find the difference of this number from the next immediate perfect square which is 43 square so 43 square is equal to 1849 you can calculate this so 43 square minus 1825 this will be equal to 24 so if you add if you add 24 to 1825 you will get the next immediate perfect square which is 43 square and the square root of that will of course be equal to 43 so the answer for part 4 is the smallest number you can add is 24 and the square root of the resulting number will be 43 so that completes part 4
Now we come to the last part, which is part five. In this part, the number is six thousand four hundred and twelve. So uh, once again, let's apply the division method to this number. Let's put bars over pairs of digits one, two, and six, four, like this. And now let's apply the division method. So in the first step, we have to find the largest possible digit whose square is less than or equal to sixty-four. This number under the first bar. And that digit is of course eight because eight square is exactly equal to sixty four. So we put eight as the first divisor and as the first digit in the quotient, and eight into eight is equal to sixty four. Now we subtract, so we get zero here, and then we bring down these two digits one and two, and that gives us the dividend for the next step as twelve zero one two or twelve. And for the divisor in the second step, we take this divisor in the first step and double it. That gives us sixteen. And now we have to find the largest digit that will go here to the right of sixteen, and as the second digit in the quotient, such that the product of this number and this digit here will be less than or equal to twelve. And the only possible digit you can see is zero because if you take the next digit one, then you will get one sixty one into one, which is clearly greater than twelve. So you have to take zero, and one sixty into zero will become zero. And now, when you subtract, you get a remainder of zero. And now, because there, uh, you get a remainder of twelve, not zero. And because you get a non-zero remainder, it means that this number is not a perfect square. The number six thousand four hundred and twelve. Okay, so you get a quotient of eighty and a remainder of twelve. And this basically means that the largest number whose square is less than six thousand four hundred and twelve is eighty. Okay, eighty is the largest number whose square is less than six thousand four hundred and twelve, and this means that eighty one is the smallest number whose square is greater than six thousand four hundred and twelve. In other words, six four one two it lies between the consecutive squares eighty square and eighty one square. So it lies between these two numbers, and hence the smallest number you can add to six four one two to get a perfect square. Is the difference of this number from the next immediate perfect square, which is eighty one square. So just calculate the difference between these two numbers. So let's do that. Eighty one square is equal to six thousand five hundred and sixty one, and this means that if you calculate eighty one square minus the given number six four one two, you will obtain one hundred and forty nine. So if to the original number six four one two, if you add 149 you will get the next immediate perfect square which is 81 square and clearly the square root of that number will be 81 so the answer for part 5 is the smallest number you can add is 149 to get a perfect square and the square root of that perfect square will be 81 so this completes part 5 and with this we have completed all the parts of question number 5 To learn more about how QMath can help you crack school and board exams, explore QMath Leap, a live online classroom program run by highly experienced and committed teachers.